Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer. In today's video, we're gonna go over how eating more veggies could be producing more ketones in your body and even helping you burn more fat. Now, this video idea came from the fact that I experienced just this. When I increased my veggies dramatically, but didn't reduce protein, in fact, I increased protein too, I saw a big increase in my ketone levels and I saw an overall increase in just my body composition. I, I felt better, I looked better. So I figured, let's dive into the research. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about butyrate, which is derived from veggies. Then we're gonna talk about beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the ketone body. And I know it sounds scientific and nerdy, but we'll go over it in detail. Then we're gonna talk about lions and tigers and ligers. Yes, we're literally going to talk about them because it's a perfect analogy. And then we're gonna talk about the science and how you can actually get more out of your diet to get more into ketosis, and potentially burn more fat. You'll have a full game plan. Before I dive into any science, please do make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell icon for daily videos. And then after this video, check out my friends over at Ujido Matcha. They are a leader in the world of matcha, 180 year old matcha company, and they're a big supporter of this channel and help make this channel possible. So make sure you check them out down below in the description after this content is all done. Okay, so when we consume veggies, they get broken down into something called butyrate. Okay, when fiber is digested, we create butyrate. Then we have to look at what the main ketone body is, beta-hydroxybutyrate. So in my mind, I was thinking, these are so molecularly similar. Could it be that if we increase our veggie consumption simply because the molecules are so similar, can we create more ketones? Well, let's look at it like this. You have lions and you have tigers. Both are ferocious cats, and they're very similar in a lot of ways, but they're also very, very different. Okay, in the case of this analogy, lions are beta-hydroxybutyrate, and tigers are just butyrate. Okay, lions are different because they have a mane. I want you to think of this mane as the hydroxy group that is added to butyrate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, okay? Whereas tigers are just butyrate. They don't have the hydroxy group mane. So they're very, very similar. It's just like what's happening inside your gut. But like any nerd would ask, what about ligers? Ligers are a combination of tigers and lions, and that would imply that they're doing the same thing within the body. Well, there was a study published in 1962 in the Biochemical Journal that found that butyrate, from breaking down fiber, could get hydroxylated in the liver to beta-hydroxybutyrate. Fiber could turn into ketones. However, this study was done in rats, and until it's done in humans, and until it's really proven, I think it's best to assume that they're different. Butyrate and beta-hydroxybutyrate are different. But now we get into sort of my personal testimony with this. I experience higher ketones when I eat veggies, and I've talked to many other people that have as well. So what exactly is going on? Well, we can hypothesize a little bit on what's going on, but first, there's a study that was published in the Journal of Functional Foods in 2017. You hear me out on this. So in this study, they gave subjects a breakfast of toast and jelly. I know, kind of cringe, right? But then along with the toast and jelly, they gave them either MCT oil, which we know is pretty ketogenic, or they gave them four grams of straight butyrate, okay? Again, the byproduct of breaking down fiber. And then, of course, they gave them a control, nothing. Well, they found that the butyrate group created more ketones in their body than the MCT group. Let me say that again slowly. The butyrate caused more ketones than the MCT oil. And this is from just veggie digestion, right? Now, granted, they gave them a lot of butyrate, so it's not necessarily totally applicable. They gave them the equivalent of what would be like a half a cup of butter of butyrate. But the point is, butyrate is more ketogenic than MCT. And had they not been consuming the toast and jelly, their ketones probably would have gone way up. This makes perfect sense, and it's exactly like what I experienced. When I upregulated my veggie content, my fiber content, all of a sudden, boom, I was producing more ketones. Molecules are funny, though. Okay, just because something looks and acts similarly doesn't mean that it's the exact same thing. I mean, it's easy to think that butyrate and beta-hydroxybutyrate are so similar, hey, they're doing the same thing. Well, no, let's list off the characteristics, and you think you'll find that they're pretty similar, but also quite different. Okay, first, butyrate. Butyrate serves as direct fuel for the intestinal cells. Okay, it also improves insulin sensitivity via something that is called glucagon-like peptide 1. It increases brain-derived neurotropic factor, meaning it increases cognition, it helps your brain feel better, but it also induces what are called fibroblast growth factors. And this allows the body to burn more fat via beta-oxidation using more fat for fuel. Now let's compare it to BHB. Beta-hydroxybutyrate improves the gut lining through stem cell development. 
So as butyrate was fuel for the intestinal cells, beta-hydroxybutyrate actually grows new gut stem cells. Now, beta-hydroxybutyrate also improves insulin sensitivity directly. Beta-hydroxybutyrate improves how our genetics help our overall cell metabolism through HTAC. And we also have a decrease in inflammation via nuclear factor kappa B. So what you see here is that, yes, they have some very similar properties on the gut and somewhat similar with energy metabolism, but then they differ in their overall signaling process and signaling pathways. So what's the end recommendation that I would give? My recommendation is that, yes, skew your protein and fat however you need to for your lifestyle, but you should probably keep your carbs under 10% of your overall calories. And I would recommend within those carbohydrates that you get a good portion of it being very fiber rich veggies. Okay. I usually recommend broccoli. I usually recommend asparagus. It's going to have a high amount of prebiotic fiber. I usually recommend artichokes. So I try to get between 30 and 40 grams of fiber in that way. Okay. I don't eat a lot of other fibers other than veggies, to be completely honest, because they're just a tad too risky. So even though you get a couple carbohydrates from those veggies, I would argue based on my experience and some of the research that it's not going to blunt your ketone levels because the butyrate is going to counteract that. Additionally, you're going to get butyrate from butter and ghee. So I would usually recommend having between two and four tablespoons of ghee throughout the day. When you cook your meals or anything like that, add some ghee to it because it's going to be a better fatty acid profile than almost any of the other meat sources that are out there. Get leaner cuts of meat and cook it in a little bit of ghee so you get the fuel for your gut. I promise you will notice a difference in how your gut feels. Okay, as always, keep it locked in my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.